chats with the book doctor. I have my coffee. And welcome to Mary Laura up. Oh, Mary Laura Philpott, who you will remember from the podcast. Now you get to see her lovely face. <laughs> and uh, she, you have the most incredible list of book recommendations. Yes, it was so good. And I just talked about it on the previous episode, but I'm going to talk about it again. Oh, you did? Uh, okay. I just read The Wangs vs. the World this past weekend, and I ate did that thing whole. It? I did love it. I did. So good. It's so that, like, sweet spot between you know, really, really literary and just plain fun and that meaty middle area that you just want to hit that's perfect. Yeah, it was, not, it, it's like so readable. I mean, mm -hmm. I hate that. People, I live in Hollywood and everyone's like, it's so watchable, which is just <laughs> such a stupid what adjective. What would it be? <laughs> yeah, well, some things are unwatchable. It's, true, let's true. face it. But it was so enjoyable to read, yet it was snarky, yet it was sweet yeah. and it was funny. It was great. And smart. Good, well, I'm glad you liked it. So I, I trust you one. I already trusted you, but now I even double trust you. Good, good. Okay, so what are we talking about? Just like stuff. I don't know. Reading. What are you excited about? Um, I figured what I would do is talk about books. I don't know when this is going to air, but I'm going to talk about books that are going to like come less than out. a week after we're recording. So this oh. is this is hot. Okay. Wow. Okay. So this is going to be mostly sort of a preview post then, because like I'm going to talk about books that are coming a few in April, a bunch in May, maybe like one at the beginning of the June, of June, but this before is the pre-order, the pre-order yes, edition. This is your pre-order thing. I um, love it. Have you read this yet? Exit West? No. <gasps> this, this is, if I were a gambling woman, which I am not because I prefer to keep my money than to gamble That's it. Fair. Um, I would say this is going to win everything this year. Really? Mark my words. Now I've probably okay. doomed it. Don't mark my words. Um, this, I'm marking them. Marking them. Look it up. All the reviews are fantastic because it is so delightful. It is this little jewel of a book. Mm. Somebody at, at Parnassus, the bookstore, um, one of my fellow booksellers held out an early copy to me and she said, do it. Well, she, at first I was like, no, I'm not going to do this because she said it's about two people in a war-torn Middle Eastern country, and they discover magical doors you can go through and end up somewhere else. And I thought, A, I am not in the mood to read about a war-torn country. There's enough terrible in the real world. And B, I hate magical realism. Mm. I like realism, realism. Um, but she made me do it. So thank you to Kat, the bookseller, who made me read this. Go it Kat. is so, I know it's cliche to say a book is timely, but it is so timely. There's so much going on in this book that is also going on in our world, mm. but it doesn't make you feel like you're taking a vitamin and reading a book that is good for you because you need to think about things. It just feels like a wonderful love story and I love it. Well, I'm excited because I actually like some magical realism. So oh my I'm, gosh, this is the perfect book I'm for so, you then. I'm so into it. It's so just into it. for anybody who's watching who's not into magical realism, it's a very light touch with the magic. Real light. It's, you know, it's not like wizards come out of the doors. It's everything is real except this one little thing. So that's nice. my thing that I'm, that I'm evangelizing right now. I, but I, it's I out it. and you can go buy it right this minute. I trust you because last Good. time it was the Wangs versus the world and it was, it was pure gold. Yay. Okay. Well, let's talk about preview things. Things oh, you yeah. can pre-order. Pre-order From it. your local indie bookshop. Yes, please whatever that may be for you. Okay, when does this one come out? This one comes out in May. This is called Sycamore mm. by Bryn Chancellor. And this nice cover. Was, isn't it? I, don't I love know that we can show the covers here. I mean, I we just have to be like, it's a brown cover with a tree <laughs> on it on the podcast. Imagine, imagine. But look at that type. I isn't like that this font. lovely? And it came, it's so funny. It came recommended by Kevin Wilson, who wrote mm. The Family Fang. The Family Fang, yeah. Perfect Little World, ah. which you also need to read. But his books, I feel like, are light, fun, crazy little ice cream cone novels that are just quirky and they're like Wes Anderson movies. Yeah, I was just going to say, he feels like he's Wes Anderson's cousin. Totally. He's the one who recommended this, and this has mm. a totally different feel. <laughs> this is about a town where a high school girl went missing in the 90s. And it's 20 years later. 
And the people in this girl's life are now kind of dealing with the after effects of that event. And in sort of the same way that Elizabeth Strout with Olive Kittredge mm -hmm. and, and some of her writing will kind of take this bird's eye view of a whole town and everyone in it. That's kind of what Bryn Chancellor is doing here. Um, I could not put it down. Like it's a mystery, but it's also mm -hmm. just sort of a character study of these people in this town and how people who barely know each other become complicit in each other's decisions and just it almost sounds like to me like if you were a big fan of cereal you would kind of dig it yes high school girl goes missing in the 90s you know same totally okay that's my new comp i'm going to steal that yeah. and i will give you credit it. for it and Do i'm going to say if you like cereal not the food the show you right. will like this yeah, yeah we can't say anything about the food but the show yeah, yeah. I'm like, mm, I'm okay, I'm into these. This is going to be one of my go-to like hand sell recommendations in the store because I Got feel it. like it's going to hit a lot of different preferences for I think that makes sense. Plus it's like really, it's, it's like sufficiently weighty, but diverting. I feel right. like weighty, but diverting is the, the current need. It is. It is. It's fun, but it's also, it's got some heft to it. Okay. Speaking of fun. Isn't that a cute Ooh, cover? So cute. Isn't it? Okay, so this is called Chemistry. Mm. It's by a new writer named Waiki Wang. Mm. And she is also, I'm going to get this wrong, but she's also like a biologist. Wait, she's a graduate of Harvard University where she earned her undergraduate degree in chemistry and her doctorate in public health. So she's a genius. You know, so she just casually just also wrote a novel writes on the side. novels. This is so quirky and smart and like sort of sly and funny yes. in a very dry way. And it's about um, a chemistry grad student who's kind of entering the adult world and dealing with her first real adult relationship and mm. big adult decisions, but she is very, very type A. And if you are, if you're an overachiever, you will relate to this. Yeah. I mean, I read it and I was like, this is just, oh, I get this so much. Really unusual. It's like me, except for the science. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Really a very memorable narrative voice. Like you get into mm. this and for maybe the first chapter, you're like, who is this? And then you just get absolutely hooked on it. So That's I love so this. It's so cute one. too. It is so cute. Yeah. Chemistry. Mm. Okay. What else do I have here? Oh, I wish I had it in my, I don't have it in my pile to show you. So imagine this book here. Here it is. You can superimpose it later. I know, we've just um, put it in there. Got and it. you know how to do it. Yeah. It's called Do Not Become Alarmed by uh -huh. Miley Malloy. You nice. know Miley, she is that extremely versatile writer who writes the Apothecary series for middle mm -hmm. grade, but then she also writes wonderful short stories and novels for adults. Both Ways is the Only Way I Want It was her book of short stories like... Mm a decade ago that was a big Oprah pick. She is so, so smart. This novel, just reading the back cover copy makes me break out in anxious sweating again, which I was doing the whole time I read it. It's about <laughs> two families who, got, I'm so excited about this book. I couldn't, I mean, I read it like not brushing my teeth, not washing my hair for two nice. days. It's about two families who go on a cruise, a big like luxury vacation cruise down to Central America. And while they're there on one of their on-land excursions, their children go missing. Oh dear. Exactly. It is like every parent's worst nightmare. Oof. And Miley tells this story in alternating chapters from the perspectives of the parents and the children. Oh, so the reader knows what has happened to the kids, right. but the parents don't. So at least you're not like, freaking out reading it because you know oh no you're freaking out oh you're freaking you're out you're still okay. freaking out you're still freaking out um how old are these amazing. kids they they range from little like i want to say the youngest is five or six up through teenagers okay. and they're um, oh my god it's amazing hbo needs to buy this and make it a mini series if they oh, don't they it. are fools listen yeah. to me hbo you heard it right here yeah okay Here's one that I actually do have with me. I don't have Miley's book because I read it, I read it so early that I was just reading like a PDF. Nice. And now I don't have the, the arc, but it's right. a, it has no, a lovely no. cover. 
it's hard to like, because I, I get those as digital reviews and I'm like, this is a very sexy digital review on Just my imagine. Kindle. Yeah. But, oh, Eden. Eden. Do you know her? Do you love her? I know her. I, she was actually a writing teacher of mine. Yeah. She used she's a to great live in writing LA, teacher. And yep. we both worked at BookSoup, although not at the same time. Oh. And she well, was what? on the show um, talking about the Colbert bump. And yes. she alluded to woman number 17 then. So I think we might okay. have to have her back on. So you remember when she wrote California, yes. how she has this knack for female characters who just do kind of what they want and yeah, they're, they're a nutty. they defy that whole likability trap. Oh yeah. You know, um, they're unapologetic. They want things that seem like they're sort of in conflict and they're not sorry about wanting them. That is what I love about her characters. And you've got that in this book again. Um, mm -hmm. It's about a woman who is trying to finish writing a, trying to finish writing a book and she's just kicked her husband out of the house. So she needs a little help with the kids who have problems of their own and she hires a nanny. And mm. as you read, you come to find out that the nanny's got some interesting stuff going <laughs> that I won't say what it is, but it's interesting. Nice. Um, so this will be like a great take it on vacation with you kind of book. Yes, that Tidus feels Tidus. like a, ooh, like a titillating kind of a. Yeah, but what, what like well written. Here. It's yeah. again, it's that middle, it's that great middle ground between it's literary and it's smart, but you also want to know what happens. Nice. So also good cover. Good type. Also a lovely cover. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Here's kind of a weird one. I like it. And I feel like, I feel like this author would be totally okay with my saying that it's weird. Claire Cameron. Mm. Do you remember a couple years ago, her book, The Bear? I think I remember okay. again the cover. Had a cover with these two little kids holding hands and running. And it's about, it was about, it was based on a true story that she embellished somewhat about a mm -hmm. family who went camping and a bear comes into the campsite. Oh and, dear. Yeah. And attacks and eats the parents. And the children hide in a cooler and witness the whole thing. Oh, and God. then they run off in the woods and they have to try to survive. Oh, it's the kind of book where when someone describes to you what it's about, you go, I am not going to read that. That like, sounds terrifying know. and upsetting. Yeah, like Room, where you're yeah. like, whoa, this yes. is going to take me out. That is an exact compare, like great comparison, but it was wonderful. I had mm. to read it because I was reviewing it and I thought, oh, this is going to give me terrible nightmares. And, you're like, and it was amazing. Get the Xanax out, yeah. Yeah, but it was amazing. And so I'm now just a lifelong devotee to anything that Claire Cameron writes. And, and that shape on one. the front, it kind of, oh, you got the faces in there, but it could be kind of an abstract bear. Oh, it could be. Maybe Look there's a that. little, a little it's visual a little wink link. to the first I one. might be, I might be pushing that one a little hard. Um, it's really, really interesting. It's called The Last Neanderthal. It is about, it has a, a storyline that takes place in present day, but it has a storyline that takes place back in whatever time it what do you call it? Neander Neanderthal times. Neanderthal times. Double olden times. <laughs> ye, ye really olden times. <laughs> ye um, oldie oldie. And it's narrated by a Neanderthal woman. And Ooh. so she, Claire pulls off this really kind of amazing narrative trick of, of writing in the kind of words and language that a Neanderthal person would use when they're thinking. And it doesn't and sound crazy? It doesn't sound at all crazy. It, it pulls you right in and it really in an amazing way feels, although you know you're reading about a Neanderthal and she's clearly doing things that we don't have to do like forage for food and you know right. that kind of thing. Worms, it feels, it. yeah, it feels almost a little contemporary because what this person's or this Neanderthal's existence boils down to are all our basic human needs. Mm -hmm. Reproduction, food, family, warmth. It's, it's not gonna be everybody's taste, but I really, really enjoyed it. And I want mm -hmm. other people to read it so that I have someone to talk about it with. <laughs> so read it so we can talk about it. I can't okay. stop thinking about it. Okay, great. Really, really interesting. Love it. Bam. Okay, I've got my little list here. I wanna make sure I don't forget anybody. Um, we actually did, we just did on parnassusmusing.net, which uh -huh. is the online magazine that, that we do at the bookstore. Right. 
Um, we have a post up right now called something like five, five guest authors recommend 10 upcoming books. Oh, so you'll see nice. some of these, you'll see some of these there, but then there are some other ones too. Um, right. Here's two. So Camille Perry, who wrote The Assistance, mm -hmm. and who is just a delightful human being, in that article recommended two books, and they are Marlena by Julie mm -hmm. Bunton, which now has a different cover. Don't memorize this cover. This is no. the old cover. Forget and The Leavers by Lisa Ko. Mm. Two very different books, but which I both just heartily agree with Camille on. Really, really good novels. Marlena comes out next month. And The Leavers comes out in May. They're both awesome. Yes. Read those. Um, here's a fun one. If you are a writer, this is Letters to a Young Writer mm. by Colin McCann. This comes out, can you tell I need glasses? This comes out in April. <laughs> like, when does it come out? It comes out in April. Nice. It's based on a series of um, writing advice blog posts. Oh, that, nice. Yeah, and it's just. I know that name too. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, what was the big one? Let the Great World Spin? Yes. Is that who I'm thinking of? Yes, the one with the, right the person. Tyro. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that one. That's yeah. who this is. Who right. also wrote a whole bunch of I was like, I things. know his name, but there's no pink kind of right. drawing it's, on the it's cover. It's out of context because it's not yeah. what you would expect. But this right. is just a wonderful thing to have by your bedside or on your coffee table. Pick up and put down. The cha you know the chapters are like two pages at a time. Oh, dreamy. Just, yeah, really oh, inspirational when you when you feel like you're just you terrible and it. you can't write a good paragraph. Oh. This reminds you that it is supposed to be hard. It's not Did easy. you read Elena Ferrante's writing book? I haven't read it yet. No, I haven't. French and Maglia or whatever. No, I haven't read it I yet. I want to talk to somebody who's read it. I haven't read it yet. I took it out from the library and of course, like I ran out of time and I didn't get to it. Oh, well, it's that classic disaster of like, they all come at once and you're like, <laughs> I can only read one of these and then I'm going to have to hit reset and start over. That happens. That happens. Mm -hmm. That's my, that's my pile that I have with me I today. love it. That is, you know what, I'm, I'm a little worried because I think this show is going to have problems for my bank account because then I immediately just want to like open up <laughs> and like my purse and run to the bookstore and just start That's the throwing things into That's me. That's the problem. We're a bit, my family and I are about to go on spring break. My kids have a little mm. break from school. And so I've, I'm stacking up the books that I want to take with me. And it's like, it's just there like, goes my whole paycheck right back into the bookstore. It's like but steamer, it's worth it. steamer trunk. Absolutely. Total um, steamer trunk. If you go, I'll send you a link that you can put into the oh, yes. notes of the show or whatever to that article because there are more great books that are coming out in April, May, early June that people Love want it. to pre order. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. What are you reading? Are I you am loving? reading. Um, I'm still reading. Everybody's going to hear this every episode because uh, we're recording a lot of them all together. But I'm reading. Um, I just read The Wangs. And then mm -hmm. I'm reading V.E. Schwab's third. Oh, yeah. In the um, Shades of Magic. Yes. You know, she lives here in Nashville. She's great. Yeah. Yeah. We're her home bookstore. She's great. She's amazing. Um, I don't know how she writes so much so fast. No, I know. Well, she's much like the one you were talking about earlier, her, where she's got a master's in art history and mm -hmm. got her first book deal right out of college and then, you know, has published over 10 books and she's yeah. like 30. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> she might not be 30 yet. She's like right on the cusp. Yeah. I think I'm she's like, still 29. You get it, girl. Damn so, it. yeah. So the, I'm reading that one, which I'm really enjoying. And I literally have a whole bookshelf. We had to upgrade from a half height bookshelf in the bedroom for the to be read area to <laughs> a full like floor to ceiling to be read. Yeah. We will not yeah. be stopped. Um, so That's I'm great. trying to decide what I will be next, which will probably be one of these that you, which, cause I can't read the ones I already have, of course, that would be too Oh obvious. yes, read one of these. Make it, if it's anything, make it Exit West. Yeah, it's, I think that's... I've become a crazy evangelist for this book. I, like, I trust you. I'm this close to going out on street corners and just handing it out. <laughs> it's just so lovely. And it makes you think about so many things that are happening <sighs> in the world without hitting you over the head. That's what it's I amazing. want. That's what I want. 
that's your book. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is fun. Let's do it again. Thank you.